Which woodworking joints should you use? With the many varied types of wood joinery, a woodworker has a number of different joints in his arsenal from which to choose, based upon the project. If you master these wood joinery concepts, you'll be well on your way to becoming a very accomplished woodworker. There are various woodworking joints in use. Some are stronger than others are. Let's discuss the more popular joints, so you know which to use for your projects. 1. Bud Joint The bud joint is the most basic and simple joint to construct because it is made with only two pieces of timber that are buted together at the ends. This also means that the joint isn't very strong in fact it is the weakest joint that is used in woodwork but it is also the easiest to make. This joint is held together with glue, nails, screws or dowel but can also be secured with a combination of methods to greatly increase its strength and aesthetics. Because the bud joint is so weak and not very aesthetically pleasing it is only used in basic woodwork projects. The strength of this woodwork joint can be greatly increased by adding a rectangular or triangular block of wood in the corner to increase the surface area where adhesives are applied. 2. Miter Joint or Mitri Joint The Mitri Joint is another one of those woodwork joints that is almost as easy to construct and make as a bud joint. Even though it is similar to a bud joint this joint is marginally stronger and has much greater aesthetics. The reason why this type of joint is stronger and more appealing than a bud joint is because the ends are cut at a 45 degrees angle and then glued together. This creates better surface area for adhesive to be applied while also concealing the end grain giving it a nice flush look. The best results for these joints are achieved by cutting the angle of the joint with a drop saw instead of a hand saw, this creates very straight and neat edges. The Mitri joint is very common on picture frames because there is no end grain showing and they don't require much holding strength. Sometimes a frame made from this type of joint is used to attach or cover the edges of wood paneling. 3. Biscuit Joint A biscuit joint is nothing more than a reinforced bud joint. The biscuit is an oval shaped piece. Typically, a biscuit is made of dried and compressed wood, such as beech. You install it in matching mortises in both pieces of the wood joint. Most people use a biscuit joiner to make the mortises. Accuracy is not as important for the mortises. You design the biscuit joint to allow flexibility in glue up. However, you must locate the mortise the correct distance from the face of the woodworking joint in both pieces. The width of the mortise is not critical. Since the biscuit is thin, you can move the alignment around. This is the very reason that I do not like this joint. It is not in perfect alignment. In addition, you spend your money on the biscuit joiner and a lot of time cutting the mortises in each piece of stock. 4. Bridal Joint A bridal joint is a woodworking joint, similar to a mortise and tenon. You cut a tenon on the end of one piece and a mortise into the other piece to accept it. You cut the tenon and the mortise to the full width of the tenon piece. This is the distinguishing feature of this joint. Therefore, there are only three gluing surfaces. The corner bridle joint joins two pieces at their ends, forming a corner. You use this joint to house a rail in uprights, such as legs. It provides good strength in compression and is moderately resistant to racking. A mechanical fastener or pin is required. You use corner bridles to join frame pieces when the frame is shaped. You can remove material from the joint pieces after assembly without sacrificing joint integrity. A variation of the bridle joint is the T-bridle, which joins the end of one piece to the middle of another. 5. Dado or Housing Joint A dado is a slot cut into the surface of a piece of wood. When viewed in cross-section, a dado has three sides. You cut a dado perpendicular to the grain. It is different from a groove, which you cut parallel to the grain. A through dado passes all the way through the surface and its ends are open. A stopped dado has one or both of the ends stop before the dado meets the edge of the surface. You use dados to attach shelves to a bookcase carcass. You rabbit the shelves to fit the dado, which makes the rabbit and dado joint. A good use for woodworking joints. Six. Dovetail Joint 
The dovetail joint is one of the hardest if not the hardest woodwork joint to construct, and as its name suggests the joint consists of pins that look like dovetails which interlock into slots. This pin and slot combination gives the joint great strength and aesthetics but it requires good precision and accuracy during the construction of the joint, or it may become loose and it can be unattractive. The pins are glued into the slots and a nail on each pin can be inserted to help keep the dovetail joint strong and square until the glue dries. These joints are most commonly found on the front of drawers or on boxes such as a wooden toolbox because of its great strength and very attractive look if a joint has been well constructed. There is usually a 3-pin setup but more or less pins can be used depending on how much strength and aesthetics you want. 7. Finger Joint A finger joint or box joint is one of the popular woodworking joints. You use it to join two pieces of wood at right angles to each other. It is much like a dovetail joint except that the pins are square and not angled. The joint relies on glue to hold together. It does not have the mechanical strength of a dovetail. The woodworking joint is relatively easy to make if you know how to use a table saw, or a wood router with a simple jig. 8. Half Lab Joint a half-lap joint is one of the frequently used woodworking joints. In a half-lap joint, you remove material from each piece so that the resulting joint is the thickness of the thickest piece. Most frequently in half-lap joints, the pieces are of the same thickness. You remove half the thickness of each. This joint is good for making workshop storage items. 9. Mortise and Tenon Woodworking Joints one of the strongest woodworking joints is the mortise and tenon joint. This joint is simple and strong. Woodworkers have used it for many years. Normally you use it to join two pieces of wood at 90 degrees. You insert one end of a piece into a hole in the other piece. You call the end of the first piece a tenon. You call the hole in the second piece a mortise. Normally, you use glue to make this joint. You may pin or wedge it to lock in place. A quality mortise and tenon joint gives perfect registration of the two pieces. This is important when building heirloom pieces. A mortise is a cavity cut into a piece of wood to receive a tenon. A tenon is a projection on the end of a piece of wood to insert into a mortise. Usually the tenon is taller than it is wide. Generally, the size of the mortise and tenon relates to the thickness of the pieces. 10. Pocket, Hole Joinery one of the more popular woodworking joints is the pocket hole joint. It is nothing more than a bud joint with pocket hole screws. The pocket holes require two drilling operations. The first is to counterbore the pocket hole itself, which takes the screw head contained by the piece. The second step is to drill a pilot hole whose center line is the same as the pocket hole. The pilot hole allows the screw to pass through one piece and into the adjoining piece. You use two different sized drill bits for this operation. Alternatively, you may find special stepped bits to perform this operation in a single pass. Most people use a pocket hole jig, such as the Craig jig. This jig allows you to drill pocket holes at the correct angle and to the correct depth. You should use glue to strengthen the joint. Of course, the Craig jig costs from $40 up to $140. To me, that is a lot of money when you can make the mortise and tenon jigs for a fraction of that price. Moreover, the mortise and tenon joint is much stronger. 11. Rabbit Woodworking Joints A rabbit is a recess cut into the edge of a piece of wood. When viewed in cross-section, a rabbit is two-sided and open to the end of the surface. An example of the use of a rabbit is in the back edge of a cabinet. The rabbit allows the back to fit flush with the sides. Another example is the insertion of a glass pane by using a rabbit around the edge of the frame. 12. Tongue and Groove Woodworking Joints One of the more popular woodworking joints is the edge-to-edge -edge joint, called tongue and groove. One piece has a slot, groove, cut all along one edge. The other piece has a tongue cut on the mating edge. As a result, two or more pieces fit together closely. You can use it to make wide table tops out of solid wood. Some other uses are in wood flooring, parquetry, paneling. You can cut the tongue and groove in a number of ways. 
I discuss a superior way to make this joint on the how to use a router table page.